Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Roy Lichtenstein. And you'll see that I have already opened up a photograph of myself uh, in Photopia. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer, and that's what I'm going to work on. Um, and I'm going to turn the opacity down on the photograph down to about 85% so that I can see what I'm drawing on top. Okay, so back to the layer on top and I'm going to go um, to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to go to the pencil tool and I want the pencil to be about 10 pixels wide so I just double check that. Okay, and I'm also drawing in black so I need to make sure that my color is black. Okay, now I start by making a click and then I press shift and a lot like the polygonal lasso tool, as long as I'm holding shift, it will keep going wherever I put new points. Okay. And once I'm happy with that, I then want to do inside the nostril. And again, I, I do the first click without pressing shift and then I hold down shift to do the rest of the line. Okay, so every time I start a new line, I start without shift held, but then I hold shift for the rest of the line. Okay, and that really is how you're going to draw the line drawing that is the basis of this piece of work. Okay, so just going around every feature where you can see lines, you're putting a line in. Okay. And obviously you can be selective with your lines, hard edges and the outline of things you have to put in. But where it comes to wrinkles, you might want to put some in, but not others. Okay. And the eyes, I would suggest you really look at the way Lichtenstein does his eyes in his work. But I'm going to put lashes along the top. And as per usual, I'm going quite quick with these lines for the sake of the tutorial. I would always suggest you take as much time as you need. Just going to make these a bit thicker. So draw some other lines in there. Okay, and then I'm going to draw a bottom line. And that's going to take me into the side of the eyeball. And then I'm going to do the other side of the cornea. And then instead of messing around with the pen tool, I'm going to grab the ellipse select and I'm just going to draw an ellipse in there for my pupil and get the paint bucket and fill that. Okay. I'm going to go back to the pen. I'm going to do my eyebrow and remember with this, it's click first then hold shift for the rest of the line. And for the eyebrow, I can be selective. I can shape my eyebrow. I can ignore those loose hairs. It's completely up to you. Okay, that will do. As I say, I'm being quick, so take your time over these things. And then I'm going to go down the face. Okay. And I think that once I've done this, this will be enough of me showing you this part of the tutorial. So zoom out and make that layer invisible and you can see the line drawing. Let me zoom in. And there you go. Once your photograph is gone, you'll be left with a line drawing. Okay, 
I'm going to cut forward to when I have finished doing the line drawing and we will proceed from there. Okay, welcome back. And you'll see I have finished the line drawing and I take away the photograph and you can see that more clearly. Now we're going to start colouring it. The first thing we're going to do is fill my skin with small dots to make our piece of work look like Liechtenstein's. Liechtenstein used small dots to, in reference to the Bende dots used during the printing of comics um, to show that connection to comics in his work. Okay, so I found these dots on Google. I typed in small dots and there they were. And I'm going to use the rectangular select, control C to copy, control V to paste it in. And I'm going to bring it up to the top so that I can work on it. And I'm going to resize it. So I'm just going to move it up and holding shift, I'm going to resize it. If I hold shift, it means it stays the same shape, doesn't stretch or squish. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see a bit better. And I'm going to right click on the layer. I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to drag that new layer over. And then I'm going to nudge it with the arrow keys on my keyboard to get it exactly where I want it. So that they line up perfectly. Then I'm going to select both of the two layers and right click and merge layers so that they all go onto one layer. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer so I have two of these big dot shapes. And I'm gonna move those dots down. And again, I'm gonna nudge them until I am happy that they are in the right place. And when they are, I'm gonna do the same again. Right click, merge layer, having selected both those layers. And you'll see I just need a little it to be a bit bigger to cover my neck. I'm not going to do another layer of dots. I'm just going to make this bigger like that. OK. Right. Obviously, I don't want my dots to be black. Um, I need them to be pinky red. So I'm going to go image adjustments, hue saturation. And I'm going to drag the lightness slider up so the dots go grey. And that means that I can go image adjustments colour balance. And I can drag the red slider up and the green slider down a little bit. And that gives me a pinky red. Not bright enough though, so I'm going to go image adjustments, hue saturation. And I'm going to move the saturation slider up to the top. Click OK, and there are my nice pink dots to use. OK, I'm going to drag that layer underneath. And what I need to do is make sure now using the magic wand tool and being on the layer with my line drawing on it, that I select all the areas of skin with the magic wand. So holding shift while I do it, I'm going to click on my face and that little bit of cheek to the right, which is in its own space and the bitter space around my lips that again are in their own space. And then I'm going to select and inverse. And that inverts my selection. So instead of selecting the areas that I just selected, it selects the rest. And then I go to the layer with the dots on and I press delete. And because I selected the rest, that disappears. So that is how to get it so it's the dots are in the area that you want them to be in. OK, so next we're going to grab a new layer. OK, and we're going to do the um, T-shirt now. So I'm going to make sure that I have red because I fancy red for my T-shirt. It's not red in the real photograph, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to go to my layer with the line drawing on it. I'm going to go to the magic wand tool. And again, I'm going to select those areas. Pressing shift if I've got multiple areas I need to select. Um, and then I'm going to grab the paint bucket tool. I'm going to make sure I'm on my new layer, then click on the t-shirt to fill it. Okay. Now I'm going to do the background. So I'm going to grab a new layer. 
I'm doing things on different layers so that if I want to change the colour, I can do easily. Separates everything. Going back to my line drawing layer with the magic wand and clicking on that outside, going back to the layer I want my colour to be on. I'm going to choose yellow for my background and then paint bucket and then click on the area and it goes yellow. Right, so now I want to do my corneas of my eyes. So I'm going to zoom in and same as I have done in previous times, make a new layer for these to be on. Go to the magic wand and make sure I'm on the line layer and use the magic wand to select both my corneas and then go to the colour, choose brown. Obviously you would go for whatever colour your eyes are. And make sure I'm on the new layer and with the paint bucket, fill them. Okay. And lastly, my lips. And I'm going to use the same layer because they're separate from each other. So it's not going to be too much of a hardship to change the color with them on the same layer. Um, this time I'm color sampling the dots so that my lips are actually the same shade as my skin, but just a solid color rather than dots. And it's all the same magic wand on the line layer and then go back to the new layer and fill them in with the paint bucket tool. And now I have one last thing I need to do, and that is to make my beard and my eyeballs white. And I'm gonna do that by making a new layer. And I'm just literally gonna fill that whole layer with white with the paint bucket. And then I'm gonna drag that layer right down to the bottom. And there you go. That is how to create a piece of artwork in the style of Roy Lichtenstein. Okay, coming back because I've got a sneaky little extra to show you. I'm just gonna delete my colors and I'm gonna color them differently so you can see a different technique. So, new layer, magic wand, click on the line layer, I'm going to do my background first, magic wand to make sure I've got that area masked off. Then I'm going to go back to my new layer and I'm going to go to the color thing and I'm going to change one of the little boxes to yellow. Click OK. And I'm going to go to the other little box and click that and I'm going to change that to orange and then click OK. And then instead of the paint bucket, I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is in the same place, just hidden underneath. And you'll see I've got this blend from yellow to orange. Now, if I drag upwards, it fills that area with yellow to orange as a gradient, which looks quite nice. But that's only one way. So if I dragged upwards, it would go yellow to orange upwards, I just delete that because I'm going to want it downwards. So I'm just going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to drag downwards and that's going to get me the yellow at the top and the orange underneath. And that's the way I want it for this piece. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same technique for the t-shirt. So new layer again, and I'm this time going to do the t-shirt red but I'm going to do red in one box and then click on the other box and I'm going to choose red again, but go a bit darker this time. Okay, click OK. So I've got red and dark red. And then on my line layer, same as usual, I'm going to mask off with the magic wand the bits of the T-shirt. Then I'm going to go back to my layer that I want to fill. And using the gradient tool, again, I'm going to drag it downward and it will produce the same effect in red and dark red. Okay, and that was a sneaky little extra. Um, and that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful.